Hi everybody, it's Silly Blocks here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how to build this hobbit hole in your Minecraft world. So I'm going to show you the interior and the exterior today. So here's what it looks like from the outside. It's mainly made out of crimson planks, spruce blocks and andesite. And then if we go inside, as you can see, there's loads of storage space and then space as well for a bed and all your essentials, your workstations, whatever it is that you need. Obviously you can change yours slightly to fit however you like to play the game if you're going to be using this in survival. But I'm going to show you a full tutorial on exactly how to build this in your world. Just before we start, I had a comment on one of my last videos asking why I don't include a materials list for these builds. So I want to ask if anybody knows a quick way in Bedrock that you can see exactly what materials are used in a build without breaking them all and then picking them up to see you know, what you, what you used. If you do know a quicker way to do it, then that would be really helpful if you could let me know in the comments. If there isn't a quick way, then I will still do a materials list for my next video. I'll just have to do it the old fashioned way and break everything and then count up what you need to make the build for yourself. But I'm gonna first ask, see if there's a quick way, and then for my next video, there'll be materials list included. Either way, whatever the answer is, so. But other than that, I won't do any more talking. Let's get straight into the tutorial. I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing you're gonna do is find a mountain or a hill or a space about the size of this. And then from here, from ground level, you're gonna count up seven blocks high. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're gonna place three spruce logs next to each other like this. And then below that, you're gonna place two more next to each other. And then three more next to each other. Then two, then another two and then another two down here. Then we're gonna repeat the same pattern on the other side. So two, three. I'm noticing now I'm recording this voiceover that I've actually done this wrong and it's wrong for the whole video. It's meant to be, the top row is meant to be three blocks, then two, then three, then two, then two, then two. But I've done it wrong and it's wrong for the whole video. I'm very sorry. You don't really notice, to be honest, with the finished product. I didn't even notice the whole time I was working on this build, but it is wrong. So I'm sorry about that. Then the next thing you're gonna do is extend each of these spruce logs so that they meet in a straight line at the front. This is gonna depend on where you've built your hobbit hole as to how much you're gonna to need to bring each of the beams forward. Obviously you build it so it fits around the terrain depending on where you've built. So I hope that makes sense, but you're just gonna bring them forward so that they all meet in a straight line at the front. Now I'm gonna outline this roof using andesite. So you're gonna place two andesite slabs on top of each other at the top on the front and then one either side of it. And then underneath that, you're gonna place upside down stairs. And then you're gonna place a forward facing stair like this, then a slab, and then an upside down stair underneath that. Then a forward facing stair, a slab, and then a upside down stair behind that one. Then a forward facing stair, and a side slab, upside down stair, slab, slab, stir, stir, and then a slab to finish it off on this side. Then you're gonna repeat the same pattern on the other side. Um, if you wanna pause this and rewind it and watch it back a couple of times, just to make sure that you get the pattern right. Right, so just to go over that roof pattern one more time, you've got two slabs on top of each other and then another slab, upside down stir, regular stir, slab, upside down stir, forward facing stir, slab, slab, upside down stair, normal stair, slab, upside down stair, regular stair, slab, upside down stair, regular stair, and then finishing with a slab. Behind the andesite and place crimson planks all the way along, filling in this whole surface, and you're gonna be placing this in line with the spruce. And we're just gonna fill in the whole thing for now, and then we can remove blocks afterwards to put in the doors and the windows. Once you've done that, you're gonna find the centre point and then you're gonna break these bottom three blocks and then the three blocks next to it on either side. You're gonna place spruce stairs in each corner. So on the top, they're gonna to be upside down and on the bottom, they're gonna be just normal, facing upwards. And then in each of the gaps that are left, we're gonna place a spruce trap door and close it. Then we're gonna place our spruce door just here and then the space behind, we're gonna fill that in also with crimson planks. And then that's it for the door. 
Then for the windows, we're gonna miss a block next to the door and then break these four blocks on either side. So one, two, three, four. And then behind that, you're gonna place shroom lights and the same on this side. And then you can cover those shroom lights up with oak trap doors and close them and it kind of gives you this window effect and also adds some extra light to the outside. Then we're going to do the flower boxes for the windows. So if you place four pieces of coarse dirt in front of your windows and then cover them up with spruce trap doors, close those. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. And then you can place any flowers of your choice in these window boxes. I'm using the pink tulips and the white tulips. I like to pick colours that blend in well with the crimson, but you can use anything that you like. Now you're going to take some spruce planks and place those above the door like I'm showing. And then on top of that, place a lantern in the middle and then a flower pot on either side. Then I'm placing these aliums. I don't know if that's how you say it. Also decorating the area with some lilacs and then if we just remove this block that's on the edge and replace that with a spruce log facing downwards. And then if there's any open bits around where you've built it, if you just fill in the ground so that it makes it look more like the house is going into the side of the mountain where you're building. Again, this is all gonna depend on where you're building yours. Now we're gonna work on the chimney. So if you remove these two blocks above on the roof and then replace those with bricks and then place more bricks like this as I'm showing and then you can taper it up using stairs as I'm showing and then we're going to place two stairs like this and then bricks above it and then campfires on the top and then if you just close those off with spruce trap doors all the way around and then when you close the trap doors it appears as if there's smoke coming out of the chimney. And I'm also breaking the blocks below these stairs and replacing those with upside down stairs. It just gives the chimney a little bit more shape so it's not a flat piece of brick. It looks more realistic. And then I'm just gonna fill in some of the area with bone mill and lanterns, just make it look more overgrown. It gives the area a little bit more life. So you can do this however you like. I'm getting rid of the dandelions, replacing those with white flowers. And I'm also gonna put some lanterns down just add a little bit more light around the area and make it look more personal. You can do this however you like, you don't need to copy the way I've done it, nor will you be able to because this is all going to depend on where you've built it. I'm also putting some saplings down and just growing some trees around the area so it looks more lived in and realistic. Once you finish that, the next thing we're going to work on is just a path going up to the front of the house. So if you use your shovel to draw out a basic pattern and then we're going to adjust it and swap out some of these blocks for coarser, hodzel. I like to try and swap the outside blocks for the coarser and the podzel and leave the centre of the path as path blocks. If you think of what a path looks like in real life, it's sort of in the middle is the bit that's walked on the most. So that's the bit that's worn in. So if you use that as, if you use path blocks for the centre of the path and then the outside is where you get like the dirt and the stones and the grit and stuff all gathering. I hope that all made sense. It made sense to me. So hopefully you understood what I was trying to say. <laughs> So now that's the outside of the house finished, we're going to work on the interior. So if you come inside and then we're going to break forward from the front door by 14 blocks. So that's 14 blocks from that side. And then if you turn right from the front door, we're going to break in this direction by seven blocks. So we stood at the front door, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you're basically gonna get rid of all the blocks now that cover that space. So you should have a room, by the time you finished, you should have a 14 by 15 room. Um, this might take you a while, even in creative, this took me ages. You're also gonna need to make the ceiling six blocks high. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So now once you've done that, you can replace all of the walls with oak logs facing upwards like this. You don't need to remove the block and then place it. So the 14 by 15 that I've told you to remove means you can then just place the oak straight down. You don't need to remove it to replace the wall. Except for where the door is, you're gonna leave that as crimson planks on either side. So there should be, so you should have your door and then crimson planks on either side and then the whole wall filled in with crimson planks. And then all of the walls to the left and the right of that should be oak logs as well as all of the rest of the walls. I'm sorry, I hope this is easy enough to follow. I'm new to making videos and doing voiceovers. So hopefully you can see what I mean from the video footage, but sorry if I'm confusing things. <laughs> And then we're also going to replace all of the floor blocks using oak planks, just like this. So fill in the whole floor using oak planks. You're going to want to place torches around as you're doing this to light it all up so you can see what you're doing. Now we're going to go into this back left corner and we're going to go forward by three blocks. And then on the fourth one, we're going to place a stripped spruce log like this and then join it all the way up to the ceiling so you're creating this beam just like this and then we're going to place one next to it but back one so now this is two blocks forward from the wall and take that up to the ceiling like I've shown and then we're going to go across by two and do another beam then we're going to go over by three and we're going to place another beam join that up to the ceiling like before and then we're going to go across by two do another beam here join that up to the ceiling and then we're going to place one forward so it mirrors the other side join that up to the ceiling just like that so this is what you have so far then if we go back onto the left hand side and if we count one two three four blocks to the left and place another beam like we did on the opposite side and we're going to mirror that pattern we did on the back wall. So now place another beam to the ceiling behind the last one. Space of two and another one all the way up to the ceiling. Gap of three. One, two, three. Another one. Take that up to the ceiling. Space of through two, <laughs> join that up to the ceiling and then fill in that corner piece, bring it forward by one. So you're mirroring the same pattern on the front and the back. It will spin around so you can see how it should look. Then you're going to join each of these beams up at the top, just like this. including this wall here. So you're just gonna bring these strip spruce logs all the way along at the top so they all meet. And here's another 360, this is what you should have so far. And then the next step is these two here, we're just going to bring these beams across in the middle. So you've got these centre beams joining up the front and the back. Just like this. And it will spin around so you can see what's going on. This is what yours should look like so far. Then the next step is to fill in all of the walls between the beams and the back walls of the house using oak wood planks. Let's just speed through this. So you're going to do this in every single section. So you're creating these little pods and this is where your chests are going to go in a minute. On the bit where the front door is, you're not going to use planks, you're going to use uh, oak logs just to keep it consistent so it should look like this and 
then for the ceiling you're just going to cut up here and you're going to break all of the middle blocks along this section here and you're going to do that on each ceiling section that's between these beams break these blocks as well and then in those spaces you're going to replace it with shroom lights you could use glowstone as well if you wanted to whatever is easiest for you to get hold of if you place a shroom light in every single space and then you're also going to place shroom lights in the ceiling of the pods but you don't need to break it's, it will be one lower than the ceiling in the middle of the room and that doesn't matter I know it looks kind of weird at the moment but it'll be fine and then if you cover up every single shroom light you've just placed with a spruce trap door now the light will still get through and this works on bedrock and java I play on bedrock so if you cover the a light source with a trap door it still lets the light source through so this is going to be a great way to light up the room and then after you've done that, if you just fill in every other bit of the ceiling that's exposed with a spruce slab, so it's like this, and then you get this sort of, it's not quite domed, but it's this textured look that different pieces of the ceilings are at different heights, so it gives the ceiling a little bit more texture and realism. Now you're going to place an upside down stair in every single corner of these little pods that you've created. So this creates kind of an arch, gives again, gives the room a little bit more shape and texture. And you're going to do this on every single one of them. And you're also going to do it on those front and back walls, as I'm showing. And then if you also cover up the sides with spruce trap doors, just like this and then close them. Do that on every single pod and where the front door is well, as well, that arch where the front door is. Leave the front and back walls. Don't put these trap doors on those front and back walls. You'll see one little wall. This is what you should have so far, what the room should be looking like. also place a trapdoor in any gaps in the ceiling and place them so they're going in the same direction as all the other trapdoors on the ceiling. And now you can fill these pods with your chests. So you're gonna go four high in each pod. And these are going to be double chests, so you're going to have loads and loads of storage in this hobbit hole. So you can open the top one just fine because you've got that space above. You, there is a bit of a gap here, which doesn't bother me. You couldn't place another chest because there was a trapdoor in the way. And now you're just going to go around, fill in all your chests. Uh, you might need to break the walls to actually get the right angle to place your chest, but then just put them back afterwards. It can be a bit fiddly. Then this is what the room's gonna look like once you've filled in all the chests. It gives you so much storage. If you wanted to put item frames on these, you would have to remove those trap doors that are on the sides. Now we're just gonna come over here and place, I'm placing a crafting table and a smithing table. You can place any workstations that you use. If this is in survival, obviously different people play in different ways, but I'm placing a blast furnace here, smoker here, and then two regular furnaces, but you could change this for all furnaces or all smokers, whatever it is that you want. And then I'm also just putting a brewing stand and a grindstone down. And then just finishing off the decorations with a lantern and a flower pot with a mushroom in it. And then if we come to this side, I'm placing down two beds. And then a slab on each side to act like a bedside table. And then just a flower pot here as well and a lantern. And then I'm placing these temporary blocks just like this so that I can then place a painting and I get the right size 
just replacing it until I get the design I want. And I'm doing the same here. Now you can remove those temporary blocks and you've got this nice painting above your bed. Then just in front of here, we're gonna place a note block with a flower pot on it, a fern in the flower pot, and then a leaf block on top of that. I'm using oak, but honestly, you can use whatever leaves are nearby when you're building this. And then we're gonna do the same flower pot plant design. I don't really know what to call this, but we're gonna do it on each of these four beams just around the rim, like so. And then if you break randomly some of the floor blocks, so these oak planks. And then I'm also breaking some more in a straight line leading between the door and the main room. And then in those spaces, if you just put some torches down, you can just use torches because we're going to cover these. It doesn't need to be lanterns. And then cover that with carpet of your choice. I'm using red carpet. And that's another way to hide a light source in a room. So if you put a torch down and a carpet over it, in case you didn't know, it will still let the light source through. So I'm covering these up as well. And then if you just add some more carpet around, sort of randomly scatter it so that it looks good. I don't really know how to explain how to do this. You can place it differently than I've done. And then if we also just break some of those blocks again, and this time we're gonna replace them with oak logs. Some of them I'm gonna place facing upwards and some of them I'm gonna place facing sideways, just to give the floor a little bit more texture and make it look maybe like it's been walked on lots and it's scuffed in certain places. And then that's the finished design. That's all there is to it. So here's a little 360 tour. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and it has inspired you for some designs you can do in your own Minecraft world. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if you've got any requests for future builds, anything else you'd like to see me try out, then let me know in the comments. Subscribe and like the video. I'll be posting several times a week. I also post nearly every day on my TikTok. So if you want to follow me on TikTok or Instagram, everything's just silly blocks and I'll put them in the description down below as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.